Hi, Dan Stein here. Let's have a look at some of the visual settings controls we have in Enscape to control ambient lighting and exposure. First, if you've just opened Enscape, you can click this X to close help. And then starting in Enscape 3.0, we have convenient access right in the Enscape view to visual settings. Here, if we expand the sidebar on the left to see the visual settings presets, we can reset the settings for the entire scene. If you don't have any saved presets, you'll see this custom preset as the only option. Right click on that and select reset to default. And you'll see some of the controls here just reset. So all of the settings on all of the tabs in the visual settings dialog just reset. Now that we've reset the settings, let's have a look at what auto exposure slider does. So with auto exposure checked, adjusting the slider changes the target brightness for the entire scene. This allows us to make an otherwise darker scene that might not have windows or lighting fixtures overall brighter. If we turn off auto exposure, it's no longer considering the entire scene and the adjustment does something a little bit different as you can see here. With auto exposure unchecked on the atmosphere tab, you'll actually see the most effect by adjusting ambient brightness. With auto exposure on, this doesn't have as much effect. Also note, in the context of what we're looking at, auto contrast will also optimize the contrast range between the lightest areas and the darkest areas in the scene. So if we go back to the main tab in visual settings, recheck auto exposure, and then when we're hovering over the slider, you'll see a little reset icon here next to the number. Note you can also type in a number. So if I click the reset, the slider moves back to its default position. Any other adjustments I made would still be applied, but I can also reset ambient brightness, and then I'll just leave auto contrast checked for now. Another thing we can do while we're on the main tab is adjust render quality. The default is high. If you keep your eye on the scene, you'll see some slight adjustments as we change this setting. This affects overall time and processing power required as well as changes to how much reflection you can see at the draft level. There's virtually no reflections. So that was draft. Here's medium. Here's high and then ultra, the highest option. Now let's have a look at what happens when we change the material in Revit. The current darker material that we're seeing on the screen is actually the out-of-the-box wall material for Revit. So if you're particularly a student using a template that comes with the Revit software, you'll have darker walls like this. So if we select a wall, go to Edit Type, edit structure, you'll see the material for this wall is called default wall. We open the material editor through edit structure and we'll notice on the appearance tab there's a dark color for the render appearance. On the graphics tab the use render appearance for the shade color is also checked. Let's switch to one of Revit's newer advanced materials. Here's a wall with an appearance asset attached to it that has a textured orange peel look. We also have a preview here showing the wall. There's the color, reflectance, and roughness. So with this advanced material, and we can tell it's an advanced material because there's not a little orange triangle on the lower left. We will apply that. 
and just of course using a lighter material where there's more reflection in the scene we can see that the scene has brightened up quite a bit. If we go into visual settings again if we adjust auto exposure on the image tab we can also adjust the color temperature to pull out the whites a little more in this scene. Finally, if we wanted to look at this same wall using an advanced texture in Revit that's a darker color, we'll pick this one that I've already prepared. We'll notice on the Appearance tab it's the same material, it just has a different RGB value modified. Remember, if you duplicate a Revit material, you need to remember to duplicate the appearance asset. Otherwise, any changes you make to this appearance asset will affect the previous material that you duplicated from. So you want this little hand to have a zero above it. So similar to where we started, this material is a darker color, but it has more depth to it in that it has a bump map applied and it has some reflectance properties. If we go back into visual settings and we were to reset to default, can see how the scene is much brighter. If we change the render quality to ultra, it darkens up a little bit as it's processed the scene a little bit more. Darker colors reflect less light. And we can adjust the exposure as needed to set the quality of the view that we want for this scene. And that's a quick look at Enscape's visual settings controls as they relate to ambient lighting and exposure.